Hi everyone, my name is Matija Majoli and thanks for watching this new episode of our integration podcast. Today I'm joined by Rabi Abu, who developed this integration between the first point and next generation firewall and Splunk. This integration POC provides customers of a first point and next generation firewall with a logs exporter component that receives next generation firewall logs and automatically forwards them into Splunk so that events and insights on else and traffic filtered by the next generation firewall engines can be visualized using the dashboard of our Splunk app and also correlated with other data available into the Splunk instance of the user. Now, this is all work from Rabi, so I'll just hand it over to him so he can show us. So we have the Splunk um, app, uh, Forcepoint app in here. So once we click on it, we get if we have any data that belongs to Forcepoint, it will show up here. So we have the next generation firewall data. And if we click on it, we'll get this main page. And the main page have three main dashboards. Uh, the first one is the system health dashboard. We'll report based on the logs we're getting in real time. Um, and then we have the second dashboard is the suspicious traffic dashboard. And the last one is the network traffic dashboard. So in the main page, we're only viewing how many uh, nodes or next generation firewall nodes we're, we're getting reports from. And here it shows the bandwidth. In the suspicious traffic, we've seen a trend of locked traffic today. And then here it shows you the correlation between the allowed traffic and the blocked traffic. In the network traffic, this is the new applications and the new domains that they were seen in the last 24 hours. So if we go with the health traffic first, uh, I have them loaded already here. Uh, so you only click on the health traffic and then you get this page. Uh, this page will show you offline uh, nodes. So we have in total two offline nodes for the for the month to date uh, data, right? But today we have one offline, went offline, which will highlight something to investigate. Um, and then we have how many reboots and how many went online, which is here, but today there is no reboots or any went online. Uh, you have the overall uh, policy reloads, uh, you have the login failed, uh, login session uh, opened, and then you have inbound and outbound traffic in here. So the inbound traffic, it shows how many report in the last uh, nodes stopped reporting in the last hour. So I stopped the stream so you could see in the last hour we have 53 inbound traffic that we didn't see data often. And the same story here for outbound, there's 46 outbound traffic that we didn't see data coming in. There's no log. So that's definitely to investigate the fact they're highlighted in red. Uh, reset commands logged by node here as well. You could see the system notification and this is by node. So we have two nodes here viewed. Um, and then we have the recent errors logs and then system management logs. And we have the blacklist that comes from the SMC which is the control plane for the, all the nodes of the next generation firewall. Uh, and then we have the blacklist logs, which show you which blacklist commands were uh, entered. So we have the new connections through VPN as well, a table of them here. Uh, and it shows you which, which node uh, it belongs to as well in here. Uh, so that's for the health traffic. Now you can go into the detailed version and then you get all the table version and more information for each one of them. Obviously no results here because we have zero login and zero. Now these dashboard shows a lot of very important data. Is it art coded? I mean the layout, is it art coded or can the user change and uh, shuffle dashboards in this uh, page so that, uh, for example, if for a customer the logs of the VPN are more important, they can move them on top. Oh yeah, no, they, they, they can edit them once they're admin, they have an admin role in, in their Splunk environment and they can add more, they can add reports and alerts as well. And they can even add more panels into these dashboards, but those are the ones, the custom that we provide. One of the benefits of this integration, besides doing its job quickly and neatly, it's also that it's open source, so can be modified to suit as each customer needs. You can make it your own. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they have the logs, they can play with them. So we have the other dashboard, which is the suspicious traffic. So if you remember, we were mentioning this dashboard. If you click on the suspicious traffic, you get this dashboard. It's pretty straightforward. There's info and there's detail one as well. Uh, but I'll stick to the info one just to keep it uh, simple. So we have the how many blocked uh, connections. That's the weekly trend uh, and obviously dropped here compared to the last week. 
um, and then you have uh, blocked categories you have 39 blocked domain names sor sources and destination IP addresses and you have blocked services and users and suspicious connections as well and if you click on the details you can dig in and see what's the what's what the these numbers are referring to and if we move to the network traffic it's the last dashboard this dashboard is done a small bit different to the others because it's a bit richer so it has a web traffic it has an application traffic and it has a service traffic and every one of them is presented the data that belongs to so for the web traffic you could see the web users you could see the oh the first two tables are quite important as well actually so the new domain names detected in last 24 hours and in last seven days um, uh, and then you have the web users and then you have the total number per web user per domain name so which you see the IP address and the node coming from and then the domain names and then you see the count of, of each domain in here uh, and then you have so that's the total domain names um, and then you have the parent web category and it show you the numbers of for each web category and then the web category which is it goes below the parent category so it's more precise kind of categorization and it show you the number of hits down here as well same thing for the application traffic as well but it's more related to application traffic the like of facebook and gmail and all, all that and then you have the service traffic uh, last that show you how many packet filtering done how many inspection uh, done um which is in the layer above a uh, high high level in the layer seven with the application and then you have the IP protocol percentage here, what's mostly used, which is, it's not a surprise, it's TCP in here. Um, and then you have the service used uh, in a table. Um, and then the last is the SSH sessions by destination. So you could see where the SSH sessions are going to. That's for the for it. And I, I mentioned as well, we have reports and alerts. And the alerts we have, a custom alert here for the next generation and for nodes went offline so any nodes went offline during the day you'll get an alert for it based on the setup now i have a couple of questions for example if you go to the suspicious traffic uh, dashboard okay now the idea behind the, the splunk app for sports point products is to make uh, visible what the products are doing and help the administrators and the users or whoever is in charge of the security of an organization to make data actionable by visualizing them first through the app and then using the data to make uh, some meaningful decisions. So for example, suspicious traffic, if I was the security admin of a company and I saw an increase of blocked connections that is way above the normal average of block connections. My first question would be, okay, so who is generating all these connections? Who is attempting to make these connections that end up blocked by the next generation firewalls? So by clicking there, I would see the breakdown in the details of uh, either the sites from the IP of the source or the actual users whose connections ended up uh, blocked. So the app would give me visibility on who is doing what, and then the next, quest, next question would be, is the user doing this uh, with the intention of doing something, or is something else running uh, with the user account uh, that is attempting uh, those connections? Now, this, I, can do this, I can make these questions because the app gives me visibility on what's going on. So this is the kind of dashboards that uh, are available in the app to help answering these questions. But then again, those can be customized to suit the needs of uh, every specific customer. And this is why the uh, dashboards can be edited uh, once they are loaded uh, through our app. And there's also a layer of automation, which is the alerts uh, that can be uh, designed to send the notifications upon any event that can be visualized or received through the logs, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the beauty of this integration. And then just the very last thing, this app is the very same that we have uh, demoed before for other products. So once the Forcepoint app uh, is uh, installed into the Splunk uh, instance of the user, any of the products that we support dashboards for uh, will be visible as soon as the Splunk instance starts receiving those logs. Yeah. Cool. 
So just a quick recap of this uh, integration. Uh, this integration provides customers of Forcepoint Next Generation Firewall with the Logs Exporter component that receives the Next Generation Firewall logs and automatically forwards them into Splunk so that events and insights on health and traffic filtered by the Next Generation Firewall engines can be visualized using the dashboards of our Splunk app and also correlated with other data available into the Splunk instance of the user. Now, all this is described in a very simple step-by-step -step fashion into our integration guide, which is linked in the description of this video. So you can get the integration guide to understand how to deploy the integration, get the code to the latest version of our Splunk app, which is listed in our integration document, and then just experiment yourself. So thanks, Krabi, for another great POC. Thanks, Matija. Thank you for watching uh, this uh, episode of our integration podcast and stay tuned for more episodes.